It was a lot of work, but I will tell you I'd do it again. The experience is just awesome. Great big waterfalls, water rushing down through the canyons. It is something that I will never forget. Oh, great horses. I love these horses. John's horses were just spectacular. You know, they, they pack well, they ride well. Appreciate everything you guys done for me. Show me some good adventures on the mountain with the horses too. That was a long lost dream of mine that I always wanted to do. Finally got it done. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Miller and welcome to the best of the West. You know, when John Porter headed into the Absorcas with sheep hunter Dick Paget, they had no idea they would be staring in the face of death. Here? Well, yeah, but... See you might pick up on the driver's side a pair of blue channel off. That's what I'm talking Oops. <laughs> Sorry. What's happened, John Porter? Well, that chain her up, started sliding backwards. I was right behind Matthew and hit an icy patch here and nowhere else to go, so I had to catch him. I had to match speed to the back of the horse trailer, and I managed to do it without bending the trailer door very much. I'll have to look at my grill guard afterwards, but kind of matched speed with him and then applied the brakes, got him stopped. So, could have been ugly. Big old hill off of here. I knew it was a little bit slick, but I didn't think it was going to be quite that bad. And just started spinning all forward and sliding backwards. There wasn't much I could do about it. So I hit the brake, felt the bump behind me, and saw John's headlight up against the trailer and figured he was helping shut me down. And the only way we could get the horses and trucks saved, we had a long, long way down off that bank. <laughs> it was all I wanted. Yeah. That speed was pretty good, really. We got lucky. Drive on, let's go hunting. All right. I've waited pretty much most of my life for a sheep permit. I've been putting in for about 30 years. I finally got the opportunity and hunted my whole life, but there really wasn't anybody I wanted to trust with my sheep permit other than Morning Creek Outfitters and John Porter. Just need a taller horse. I have to find a taller stump. I've probably got 45 years of hunting experience, but it's been mule deer and elk. Like I said, this is my first sheep permit. I might find something new that I'd like to do, except I don't know if I can wait another 30 years for another permit. <laughs> Man, there's a pile of elk over there. That's a really difficult place to get to. We're not allowed to camp over there on the commercial use permit. I'm only allowed to camp in certain places hunting now. That's about a, oh, 18 hour round trip <laughs> to get in and out of there. We got the boys out with some elk hunters right now and we might have to go get into some of them, but that's a pretty major expedition. Our biggest challenge uh, on this hunt so far has definitely been the weather. 
Uh, we started out, it was really cold and snowing, and now it's warmed up quite a bit. And, uh, the weather's still not really cooperating. The mountain's been socked in off and on all morning, but we're gonna work it out. We'll wait on the weather if we have to. Man, now I tell you, if you say these guys aren't hunters, then, then you've been in a tree stand too long. Not only did they have to survive the icy cliff sides, but John and his crew had to wait out the harsh weather patterns that the Absorcas are infamous for. However, persistence always pays off, especially in the mountains. Hey, welcome back to the Best of the West. I'm Dan Miller. If you're just joining us, John Porter is guiding his hunter Dick Paget on his very first sheep hunt. Now, Dick has been waiting for this for 30 years, 30 years. And now it's down to him and the mountain. Boy Scout at work there. Red Needles works just like Boy Scout fuel. Well, our weather turned pretty sour on us here. It's snowing hard. Looks like it's gonna stay a while. Looks awful dark up country. I did get about 20 minutes there to glass a bunch of that. Didn't even find any tracks that really interested me that, that I thought were ram tracks. So what we're gonna do is uh, my nephew was guiding the elk hunter here and they killed a bull just underneath the hill here so we're gonna go down here help him pack up that bull pack it out see what the weather does a little later but you know that's one of the things we do a lot especially in this area I have these sheep hunters come pretty late and we end up with some snow days but also have some other guides running around hunting elk and oftentimes they spot some rams for us too so let's go have a look at this bull see what they did got I know they only shot one shot, so wherever it landed, that was that. Dark on the bottom side, too. Now here's something new for you folks. A little Flatlander Culinary School. How to burn a pizza. I you know, was coming up the trail this morning. If I don't show this off, I'm never going to live it down, so the first blood was mine. Well, Brian just got up here to his bull, him and Matthew. And we got to hear the shot crack and then the gun to go boom because we were actually closer to the elk than they were. What'd you say they were, Matthew? 680? Uh, 680, yeah. Didn't have a good place to throw a pack down and build a rest, so I pulled out my shooting sticks. Uh, got Brian settled in there, and uh, this bull came cruising up through there and finally got an opening on him, and 680 yards, squeezed the bullet right in back of the shoulder on the other side and he didn't go very far. <laughs> this is where we found him piled up against this tree. The old Huskama optics you can just adjust right for so you can hold right on it. Worked pretty good didn't it Brian? Worked excellent. <laughs> well hey congratulations buddy. Thank you. <laughs> good shooting man. Finally found what we're looking for over here, I think. 10 rams in a pile, pretty good ram. Yeah, it's a long ways around. We gotta go all the way back off of this ridge, across up the bottom ways, up on the, the ridge that they're on, but we'll be coming in from downwind. And also, depending on which one of the two ridges we go to, it should be somewhere between 300, 500. Um, not too bad, should be shooting right into the wind. If they'll hold up there, we'll sit here and watch them for a little bit till they bed back down, make sure they don't move on us, and then make a run on them. Now they're a pretty good ram over there. If we can get close enough to yeah. get a shot at him, he looked awful good on my wall. Fong Draymon, I've got a spot reserved on my wall that I've had reserved for about seven years. I've had to fight a couple times to keep pictures from being hung on it, but I'm going to get my ram up there.
Old Dick sounds pretty determined, doesn't he? The rugged mountains of Wyoming can break a man, or they can make him. And like most mountain stories, this one's not over yet. But trust me, when this one ends, you'll be talking about it for days. Hey, welcome back here to the best of the West. John Porter is closing in on a sheep for his client, Dick Padgett. But the mountain isn't finished throwing obstacles their way just yet. is up here. We're going to slip up the hill here. I think if I'm predicting this right, it ought to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 yards. I'm going to take the right hand side of this knob instead of the left hand side because he's left handed. Make it easier for him to lay down. So we'll see how it works. We may have to adapt and overcome. bit to get an angle on that one because he's right behind it. He's laying down to the right. He's the highest one of the two, of the three, right? Of the three, yeah, just left of that great big dead tree. Right. We've got a pretty strong wind, but it's pretty much just a headwind. Variable about five to 15. A little bit of snowflakes I see is blowing from the left. Hold clear up on the front end of his shoulder. After 30 years of waiting, Dick's got a tag in his pocket and a ram in his sights. He's going to pull the trigger now and put this ram on the ground without a trace of an entrance or an exit wound in his hide. You believe me? See if I'm telling the truth when we come back. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back. Well, if you've been watching us on this show, you know that John Porter's got his client on a trophy ram at 600 yards. You also know we've been hinting at this incredibly precise shot the entire show. You've waited long enough. Let's see how this hunt unfolds. A little bit of snowflakes I see is blowing from the left. I have you hold clear up on the front end of his shoulder. I knew when I saw the shot go to the left that the wind had switched on me and I hadn't noticed that. But I was thinking about we need to hold one bar over and before I could get that said to Dick, even though the ram was facing us, he was comfortable with the shot. He held one bar over like he was reading my mind and put one right down the center. Beautiful shot. Nice follow-up shot. Nice. <laughs> Good one, man. Oh, man. The windage enabled reticle on the Huskama scope makes it fast and simple for precision follow up shots. Lighted it right up on his brisket. Good shooting, baby. <laughs> that is a nice ram, buddy. When you shot that head on shot right there, I think it went right down in his. <laughs> like that, I think he got a little piece of his chin right in his chest. And... 
the old 6.5. That was much of a target standing there looking at you at that distance, I can tell you that. Uh-oh. Down a pretty slick, muddy hill, and my scabbard got turned upside down and dropped my gun in the trail. And in the last hour, I'm wondering how I was going to eat some crow and has gone if I could shoot his long-range shooter. But thank God I didn't have to. He volunteered it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dick finally asked me to use my gun, and I told him that's fine, but rent's pretty high on a gun like that this far up the creek. My knob's back down to my 200 yard zero, scope power down to five, firing pin down. That way you can look at my gun, I can look at yours. You can check me, I'll check you many times over. Repack my stuff here and go get our ponies. Dick. Must have had his mouth open because you stuck it right down in his mouth. Can't believe it. Was it worth all the 30 years of waiting? Every bit of it. Mighty fine 37 inch Wyoming ram. Don't know how you could beat it, buddy. And a mighty fine shot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good one, man. I love it. See this this right here is his, his lamb tip. Okay. That's a year and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. Six and a half. I don't even care about the halves. <laughs> you know, while on a hunt like this, a lot of the guys are really focused on the trophy and the spot they got picked out for it on the wall. But at the end of the day, when a guy comes home and he looks up on that wall, when he sees that animal, what he remembers is the friendship, all the details of the hunt. That's what'll stick in his mind for the rest of his life. Oh, I think that'll ride for a little ways. Another day in paradise, yeah. off the hill. Now tell me that wasn't incredible. After braving all the challenges of the Absorca Mountains, the opportunity to take a trophy presented itself. The right technology complemented Dick's keen shooting ability, allowing him to make the quick adjustments to make the kill. Outstanding job. Thank you. <laughs> You know, the mountains that surround Yellowstone Park have intrigued hunters since their discovery by Jim Bridger in the early 1800s and were considered sacred by the Native Americans long before Columbus discovered the Americas. Today, Pete Wheat has the rare privilege to hunt these mountains with John Porter. Fortune has finally smiled on Pete. He's drawn a coveted bighorn ram tag for Area 2 in northwest Wyoming. Now, the challenge of the hunt is only matched by the scenery. Later in the show, we'll head to a neighboring area to continue the hunt with Francis Kegler, who likewise has the opportunity to take a majestic bighorn ram. We'll have all this, plus some shooting tips and a lot more, only on the best of the West. It took 26 years to draw this Wyoming sheep tag, and really excited to get up here. I'm a rancher from eastern Kansas in the Flint Hills area was born and raised into a ranch and family. We've all, always had really good horses back there. When I talked to John originally, he said he had good walking horses and if I could ride a horse and keep up with him that I would probably get a sheep and that was definitely the, the truth, you know. And you know, anybody can ride a horse and follow him for a few days is gonna get a chance at a sheep, no question about it. Got a bunch of rams just came around the hill up here. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but it's a really, really calm day, quiet day. There's a real good ram in that bunch, it looked like. We just caught a glimpse of him coming around in the shadows. And I hope that ram is what I think he was, but 
The three of us looked at him, Rob and Matthew and I. Think things are about to get good if they don't lay down in the trees and hide forever. You know, when John Porter called me, I knew his name from the Best of the West show and, you know, knew of his success. Thought about that long range gun and I thought about a 57-year-old guy that's only about half as tough as he really thinks he is. And I thought that that gun might be the answer. You know, I feel pretty good out to 250 or 300 with mine, but longer was gonna be tough. So anyway, I uh, chose John for a number of reasons, just like his disposition really well too. So got within two weeks of coming on this trip and I was uh, hit on the side in my pickup by a guy that ran a ran a red light stop sign and uh, rolled me over twice and you know shouldn't have shouldn't have been able to make it but uh, everything was on my side and I came up here but uh, you know when I got here I wasn't as fully recovered as I'd hoped and we had to make a big long stock on these seven rams and I uh, never have been very flexible and I couldn't get in position one time and then the fog rolled in and allowed us to get to another area Things were pretty tough, there's no question about it. Well, after 26 years of waiting, Pete finally drew this tag, and to end up in a car accident like that only weeks before this long-awaited hunt, unbelievable. He's lucky just to be here with John. And if there's one thing that the mountains between Yellowstone and Cody are famous for, it's rapidly changing weather conditions. <laughs> Don't lose hope. It's time for a break here. When we come back, we'll see how Pete's luck will fare right here on the Best of the West. Hey, welcome back to the Best of the West. Pete Wheat has left the lowlands of Kansas for the high country of Wyoming, due east of Yellowstone National Park. But things are not going so smoothly. With fog and cold and the effects of a recent car wreck, these are just a few of the things that stand in the way of success. It's time to make his move. The trophy that he has been waiting 26 years for a shot at is moving in and out of the fog. But with the added range of John's Best of the West Signature Series rifle, one shot is all he needs. John ranged the Rams and uh, got the scope set on his gun, we definitely used his gun because it was going to be 400 yards or better. That was, uh, I think, my only chance. We got up there and he made me a little bench on a rock wall. The fog cleared and those seven rams were out in this big high alpine basin. The biggest one on the back and he ranged him again and set the scope for me perfectly. And then it was just down to a little help from above making a shot. Thank you. <laughs> 26 years of waiting came true. Uh, you're a tough dude, John. <laughs> I wouldn't do this for $100,000, let alone what you get. <laughs> we got her done. and When I heard that, that'll do from him, I was pretty tickled. We heard that big whop, and, and uh, we had a lifelong dream for me come true. Say, buddy. I say thank you, John, and thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what a beautiful place. What a beautiful sheep. This is what we's after. That wow. is a dandy old ram. Looking good, Pete. Looking uh, marvelous. I, I totally believe it, man. Really, I got to take my ram exactly where I wanted to. We got to take it in a big open bowl basin as high up as you could get on the mountain just we were at the right place at the right time what a dandy ram it's about the same on both sides can't beat it what do you think pete i think he's number one he's my world record couldn't be better hey how about that ram huh you know, with the rain and the fog, that was quite a feat. Congratulations.
Well, so far, Pete Weed has taken a beautiful trophy bighorn ram in northwest Wyoming, and now it's Francis Kegler's turn. He's drawn an area five sheep tag just south of Buffalo Bill's home in the Rockies, Cody, Wyoming. You know, there's no telling how many beautiful things you can see in the mountains. You've got waterfalls, big mountains, beautiful scenery. Every day is another day in paradise up here. About a year ago, I guess, a gal told me that an archery hunter, she told me that that long range shooting, that's not hunting, that's just killing. I can tell you on one of these hunts, there's a whole lot more hunting goes on than anybody would ever get in their 40 acre woods. It's big, it, it's huge. You, you just don't understand how big the country is. First day out, we're sitting at breakfast and, and they're telling me, you know, maybe pack an extra sandwich. This might be an overnight deal. And I thought, well, okay. You know, they know what they're doing. You know, and I looked at the horses. I didn't see any sleeping bags or anything. I thought, okay. So we go on up the mountain and uh, we're glassing off this one point. And right there they tell me, well, we're in for an overnighter. I said, okay, well, kind of conserve the food a little bit. And then we drop off this big old hill, you know, you're almost afraid to walk down. Here we are going down with the horses. And then we get up there to where we seen the sheep. Yeah, find the sheep. We keep looking and waiting and then, then we look, go up further. Finally, we're up through a waterfall, a real beautiful waterfall and, and glaciers up in there. Still no sheep. We kind of go up and there's one more pocket to the right. We go up there and, and uh, there we find a big old grizzly bear kind of just milling around. We're looking for sheep. Next thing we know, we see a mama grizzly bear and a couple babies up in there. We, you know, it's almost dark. So we got to go back, back down the timber line and spend the night. We're at about 9,900 feet elevation. Probably gonna get really cold tonight. There was a lot of ice hanging on the rocks this morning, so probably get down to about 25 or so. We'll sleep for a little while and then wake up and feed the fire. John finally found the ram and we went down about 30 yards uh, over to the ridge, kind of crawled up. Dry fire and seemed to calm me down quite a bit. I wasn't holding the scope quite Jack level. Yeah. And John straightened me out with that. The wind was blowing pretty hard at our, our back, and, and John didn't think there was uh, any reason to compensate for the windage. Hey, what about it, huh? A perfect shot on a perfect day. Congratulations, Francis, well done. And as it turns out, this is an extremely rare trophy. When we come back, we'll get a closer look and see why. Stay tuned for more of the Best of the West. It has been a great hunt so far. John Porter and his hunter, Francis Kegler, have triumphed in their pursuit of a bighorn ram here in the wilderness of Wyoming. But this is no ordinary ram. Let's take a look. 
But I this do. is all about how many years of applying for a license? Well, I had 14 points. I've been racking my brain to see, I don't know, at least that many prior to the point system. So, been a long time. Hey, I'd like to compliment you on that shot, quartering towards us, right on the point of the shoulder. That ram went about 20 yards and rolled down the hill right to here. And his bed is 25 yards from here, maybe. <laughs> so, you know, excellent shot. I always love a good shot. Right. You did it just fine. So, appreciate everything you guys done for me. Show me some good adventures on the mountain with the horses too. That was a long lost dream of mine that I always wanted to do. Finally got it done. Good way to do it. Well, let's take a few photos and okay. pack him up, march on out of here. Well, good plan. Man, what a beautiful ram, Francis. 28 years of putting in for that tag has earned you quite a rare trophy. To take the oldest ram that John has ever laid his hands on is quite an accomplishment. We thought we would take this opportunity to help you understand how to age a bighorn ram. John has come into the studio with a few examples for us to take a look at. This ram of Francis's was 12 years old. Now, out of 98 sheep that I've had my hands on, this is the only 12-year-old ram. What an old warrior of the mountain. He's evaded predators, hunters, eagles, wolves, grizzly bears for all these years. Now, a lot of you wonder how we age these sheep. They've actually got annual growth rings that are pretty easy to see. In fact, sometimes you can see them even through a spot and scope at four or 500 yards away. You can get a pretty good idea what it is for age, but the, the horn grows year round. They never lose their horns on a sheep. And these annual rings that you can see on here is actually during the late winter when their body's down the most and they're growing the least amount of horn is what creates that recess. Now, when the, when the lamb is born in the first six months, he'll grow just a little bit of horn, okay? This little bit of a bump, which is kind of hard to see on this one. This is actually his, his lamb ring. This is a year and a half old ring here. So born in the spring, this is the winter of when he was a year and a half old, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, and eight and a half year old ram. That's how old this ram was. He's kind of easier to see on this bighorn sheep head. This was a, a winter killed ram. This was his year and a half old ring. He would have had about this much tip on here if he hadn't been broomed. This is two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, to eight and a half year old ram. Aging these old rams is, is kind of an art. You can see the progressive growth here. When they're younger, they grow more horn or at least longer horn. And each of these sections gets a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And a lot of times on the really old rams, the last, like this ram from eight and a half years old to 12 years old, he may have only grown another inch and a half of horn. In this particular area, uh, 10, 11 year old ram is about as old as they ever get. And this 12 year old ram was an exception to the rule. Definitely the old warrior of the mountain. Boy, now that is one tough old ram. And the sheep has some age on it, too. Hey, thanks, John, for that tidbit of knowledge. And of course, hiding out at 10,000 feet will definitely keep you off the beaten path. To hunt with John Porter in Morning Creek Outfitters, give them a call at 307-587-5343 or visit them online at wyominghunts.com. The guys that used to come with my dad in the 60s and 70s, those guys came for the hunt. It wasn't all about the numbers and what it measured at the end of the day. You don't get any more rugged than this, Not a bit more rugged. Are we having fun yet? 
Guys need to get back into the hunt for the hunt itself and the experience in the mountains. I personally feel when I'm on top of the mountain, I'm a lot closer to God than I am sitting in a church. Thank you, John, and thank you, Jesus. Hi and welcome to the Best of the West, I'm Dan Miller. You know, being able to hunt is becoming a rare privilege that not everyone can enjoy. And once you're able to get out on a hunt, all too often we're tempted to focus on the trophy we've taken or the complexity of the shot. Well, today is a little bit different. John Porter has been on our show for years now, but I'm telling you, you have never seen him like this. After a lifetime of guiding other hunters on their once in a lifetime ram hunts, he finally gets to take a moment for himself and try to fill the tag he's been waiting for for 19 years. We want to take this truly unique moment and talk about the heritage of the bighorn sheep hunting that runs deep in John's family. In fact, to kick things off, we want to show you Tim Porter's hunt from last season, a remarkable experience for the Porter clan. A little lead paste pepper spray, in case Fuzzy Wuzzy Bear wants to come say hi. Don't know why it takes so much stuff to go sheep hunting, but it seems to. As all families grow up, they tend to kind of scatter to the winds and they get into their own deal. We don't get a chance to hunt together a lot, you know, like we did when we were kids. This was an opportunity for me to get back and do the family hunt. And my dad passed away in 1994 at a very young age because of skin cancer. I know some of the earliest memories of hunting the mountains with my dad, I was riding a Shetland pony at that age. I could ride my Shetland all day long and, and dad would take me along on some of those hunts. So my dad was a competitive shooter and an outfitter and all of us kids learned that. He taught us all the to hunt from the time before we could even get a license. We were following him around chasing deer. We learned a lot. We didn't just go hunting, we went and learned what they were doing and, and how to go after them, you know. I think my dad left all of us with this extreme respect for the mountain and the animals that you hunt and in his patience that he taught us how to hunt and to do it together. It's something that I often think of when I'm sitting on a ridge somewhere glassing for sheep or something. I think he'd have been proud of all of us for, for still being here and still doing it, especially the days that we get to do it as a family. Hey, Tim, why don't you take your saw go for a walk? John and I hunting together is always a challenge because we're always pushing each other, you know. I don't know, it's always a competition, I'd say, that between the two of us. And it's got us in a few messes <laughs> over the years, spending the night out with no sleeping bag when it was 17 below. Push. It's been crazy, but we enjoy pushing each other. You win. One more out of the way, 10,000 to go. <laughs> the mountain to me, it's an adventure and you never know what's going to be around the next corner. You know, it might be grizzly bears, it might be this big open mountain valley with snow-capped peaks and whether there's elk going through it, bulls bugling. I have a saddle horse that he rides up on the ridge and he just stops and looks at the whole valley. He'll stand there for 15 minutes and look at it. It's not just a personal perspective, but even the animals get into it. They just, they soak up the view and, and it just does amazing things for the inside of you. One of many things that my dad really taught me a lot about is just respecting the animal that you hunt. The bighorn sheep are almost sacred to me because it, I just get a different feeling when I'm on top of the mountain with them in their world. These bighorn sheep been running these mountains and avoiding predators and making a living out in this harsh, harsh country. We got up here where we wanted to get to today. Awful lot of country to look at. A lot of it's very, very difficult to get to, but 
in order to not spend the night out up here, since we don't have sleeping bags and everything, wind's picking up. I think maybe we'll go towards a hot dinner and a warm bed. We'll go again tomorrow. Oh, wow, man. Let's go. Man, the Absorca Mountains are a beautiful background to this story. Hey, we'll be back in a moment to do like Robin's horse and soak up some more of that view in just a second. All this and more right here on the Best of the West. It is a beautiful morning here in the mountains that Buffalo Bill called home. Tim Porter is out with his older brother John as they search for just the right trophy to meet Tim's particular tastes. Got some rams up here. We're looking about four miles, so it's really tough to tell, but you kind of catch a glimpse when they turn their head. You can see that horn moving. It looks like a bunch of mature rams, so we're going to have to bail off of here, and get a little closer and have a look. Probably three hours ride, the way we have to go just to get close to them to have a look. When you're looking for sheep on the mountain, initially when you ride up on a place, you check the stuff close to you first, at least I do. And then I start picking apart the places that are typical places for a ram to lay. As the day progresses and the light changes and it warms up and they pull back in the shade, they get harder and harder to pick out. And at that point, then you start looking for pieces. I'm gonna give you an idea here just how hard it is to see these rams could just see the horn of the one over here on the right. You can see the one bedded right in the cut in the center and one on the left here bedded, probably the easiest of them to see. When most people think about spotting an animal, they see in their mind a profile. They don't see a shape or an angle or a, just a part of a hip or a part of a horn. When you start picking it apart with your spot and scope, you know, you see a piece of a hip or an ear twitch or something like that that, that clues you in. It's tough, man. Getting through this scope a little bit. I don't know that I could recommend a guy passing that one up. The problem is none of us will get any sleep tonight because you'll be stirring and kicking and dreaming and stuff. <laughs> We've spent, how many days, Tim? Eight or nine days horseback hunting. You did about 10 days of backpacking all over the place. And we've got a boomer right up here. That is why we use shooting equipment like the Huskamaw scope, which is designed for long range accuracy. That was a 670 yard shot on a heck of a ram. Congratulations, Tim. Hey, we still have John's hunt yet to come, so stick around for more of the best of the West, your long range shooting authority. Hey, we're back here on the best of the West. I'm Dan Miller, and so far, younger brother Tim has taken a ram to remember in the wilderness of Northwest Wyoming, but his trophy has landed in a really tough place to get to. Lat Durrance is with John to help out, and things aren't looking too easy for them. I'm not, even if I did that, I'm not worried about that part. I'm worried about coming back with meat and the head across that, getting down towards where we're at.
We finally got up here to Tim's Ram. What a job. We're probably going to end up spending the night the way it looks, but I actually uh, got a radio out called Little Sister, so maybe she'll find us another route off here because the route we come up was nasty. A lot of cliff climbing. Pretty rough stuff, but uh, that was a good one, Timmer. Good one, buddy. That's an awful good ram. Awesome ram, nine and a half year old ram. You know, Tim is one of these guys that he just tends to do things on his own. He spends a lot of time working extra hard just to finish something on his own to not rely on other people. And I was really proud that he came to me when he drew the sheep tag and we got together to do this. Something about these old bighorn sheep. I sure love hunting them. Oh, I was, I was wound up. You get so excited you can't even hold still, you know, I mean, it's a real experience. Chasing those, those rams have always just had something special to them that I've, I've always liked chasing them. It just kind of gets in your blood, <laughs> but you don't get any, very many opportunities to go do it yourself. Well done indeed, Tim. It really is a special hunt when you have your family along for the adventure. And now it's John's turn to fill a tag that it took him 19 years to draw. Well, we worked pretty hard getting up into this basin. Nobody's been in here this whole season. There's no tracks on the trail, hasn't been any. Giving the old ponies a good workout. This old horse here is a horse I've had since she was 20 months old. So she's about a 94 model. It was actually the first horse that I'd ever bought myself. Prior to that, I rode my dad's. Kind of an ornery old girl, but she'll do the job. Snug them up just a little bit. Get another week out of them, put the pressure on him. A lot of people don't realize this. When you go in on one of these sheep hunts for 10 days, and it's not like you just run down to Walmart and pick up what you forgot. Whatever you've got, that's, that's what you're gonna live with for the next week or 10 days. And that's where Robin really shines. All the small details, she can put it together, she can pack it on a horse. Must be 120 pounds in here. <laughs> If I'm not there, she can do it anyway. Maybe not quite that much. She's had five bighorn sheep hunters that she's guided over 70 years old and got them all bighorn sheep. I like to explore things a little carefully myself, and John's not that way. He's always about seeing something new and doing something different and covering new country, and, and I've learned so much. I've covered so much ground that I'd have never tried on my own. I don't know, John's got the same sense of adventure my dad had. My dad went a lot of places just to say he went there, you know, and, and John's the same way. I mean, he gets up somewhere, up one of those drainages, and, well, I've never been up that ridge, so away we go when we go up that ridge, you know. Well, looks like maybe we kept the bears out of camp. We just got rolled back into camp here, and everything seems to be in good order. We'll turn the electric fence off, take it down, and set up shop again, go on another sheep hunt. Well, with camp set up and things ready for the hunt, this long-awaited family adventure is off and running. We'll be back in a moment to see the conclusion to John's ram hunt right here on The Best of the West. John Porter is in the Absorca mountain range with his nephew, Matthew Rick. They're doing a little spotting from camp, trying to come up with a rock-solid game plan getting down to the point that we were losing days and we weren't sure that he was going to have the opportunity to finish his own hunt. And when you've spent so much time filling other people's dreams on these sheep hunts and then to not be able to finish his own was going to be really disappointing. I was so busy, I crimped myself down to about four days was all the time that I had to hunt. We got in and found the batch of rams we were looking for. There wasn't really any question about it. It was an awesome ram. We didn't have a lot of time to set up. It was tie the horses up, get our stuff together, and see if we can get the ram stopped before he got into the trees and we'd never see him again.
How far is it, Rooster? 450. Ready? Yep. There he is. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Right in the hole. <laughs> now, that's what I'm talking about. All this time I spent guiding. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> All this time I spent guiding. I've had a total of about three days to hunt for myself. I got another hunter waiting for me to hunt another area. I'm about five hours horseback in, and it's 5.30, dark at 7. Gonna be an all-nighter, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> wow! 450. Cooper rifle, Huskama optics. Next best thing to be in there. Ready for the next one. Now that's what I'm talking about. A good old broom ram. Head pulled out of there. Oh yeah. Look at that old broomer. Big old bases. Kind of tight curled. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half years old. Beautiful dark cape. Let me tell you folks, this sheep hunting, it's not all about this. It's about the country and all the other animals you see and hunting with your friends and family. It's what it's really all about. Although a dandy old ram sure puts a fine finish on it. What a dandy. Look at how heavy that old boy is. Look at that be number 97 for me and I couldn't be any happier with this he's a monster to me I love it it does not get any better than this folks you don't get this in your 40 acre woods I was so excited when he texted me the picture of the ram from the mountain and said here it is I was so excited for him Well, you know, when my dad died, I, you know, I never had the opportunity to really, to really absorb it, you know. This hunt with my brother and my sister and my nephew was, was really a lot of fun. What a hunt, huh? And although the animals were incredible, the experience to be out in the wild with family that's the real treasure of the moment. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this show. We'll have more great hunting from your long range shooting authority next time, only on the best of the West. I'm Dan Miller, see you next time. Very impressive. Another beautiful ram. That is an old ram. He's a good shot. Ooh, thank you for getting me here. Beautiful sheep. Yep. Beautiful country. For a once in a lifetime sheep hunt, John Porter is definitely the way to go. Uh, his, his horses are great, everything is safe. He's, this guy knows sheep like the back of his hand, hunted them for years. For a once in a lifetime hunt, he, he will find sheep, he will have a chance. To hunt with John Porter and Morning Creek Outfitters, give them a call at 307-587-5343 or visit them online at wyominghunts.com.